So recently, the teaser trailer and the official trailer for Prehistoric Planet Season 2 came out, and I figured I'd react to it and give my uh, thoughts and feelings about it. Um, now, for some context, I did see the first, uh, well, I saw parts of Season 1 of Prehistoric Planet. I saw the full first two episodes of the beaches or shoreline episode and the deserts episode and then i saw clips like of the or clips throughout the from uh season one such as the uh triceratops herd migrating through the cave i think and then the carnotaurus mating dance um but yeah no overall i think it's a really good documentary series it's obviously the paleo accuracy is as about as good as you can get um you know obviously there's paleo uh, paleontologists who are consultants on this show so uh, <clears throat> the accuracy is going to be you know the like very high level so you know overall i think it's a good series but let's go ahead and react to the teaser and the official trailer So it looks like we got two hats or gopterics here. Um, and it looks like the director of the documentary decided to <clears throat> include or depict them with sexual dimorphism. And I'm, I'm going to guess the male is the one with the, uh, the bigger crest and the blue, um, the bright blue coloring on its, uh, on its skull, um, basically for mating display and to attract females. Um, and obviously the female is the one without the crest and you know they're shown with picno fibers which as far as uh as as far as i understand the paleontology consensus on the skin covering of pterosaurs is that most of them had picno fibers which are similar to feathers um and as you can see in this clip uh Actually, first, those are, I mean, that's interesting speculation about what pterosaurs and specific, specifically hats or gopteryx sounded like. Um, but also, you know, and this goes, this sort of like, this is sort of within the broader, um, uh, broader context of the uh, docu-series of uh, Prehistoric Planet, which is like, I like how they show these prehistoric animals such as the dinosaurs and pterosaurs not just as like movie monsters as you see in jurassic park but you know as actual animals that once uh, walked and roamed this earth um you can show that rather than showing these hats or gopteryx chasing uh you know you know chasing and we're doing like a <laughs> stereotypical monster chase scene you see them you know, mating and, you know, acting like animals as animals should. So here it looks like we got a herd of titanosaurs uh, migrating through a volcanic landscape. And there's obviously a lot of volcanic activity in the background. I'm going to guess this is late Cretaceous India because I think, uh, think uh, geologists and paleontologists uh, agree that there was a ton of volcanic activity in late Cretaceous India about 66 million years ago. And I believe there have been titanosaurs or member or a specific genus of the titanosaur family that was found in uh lake or a lake cretaceous strata in india so right here and in the previous scene with the looks like the dromaeosaur jumping to catch what looks like 
uh, a late Cretaceous bird. Um, you know, and I'm going to guess this is a Dromaeosaur because I believe I see, actually, let's go back. I believe I see the sickle claw or the toe claw, the big toe claw that Dromaeosaurs have. And as you can see here, there's uh, true feathers attached to the forearm. And, you know, the paleontological evidence points in the direction of this because on specimens or genuses such as Velociraptor, the like the fossils show that they had quill knobs, which which is evidence that they had true feather <laughs> true feathers or a covering of true feathers. And it's another dromaeus looks like a juvenile dromaeosaur hitting one of its parents or running into one of its parents. As you can see the sickle claw here. And we got a couple of plesiosaurs here. I can't tell what species, but I believe in season one in the beaches episode, the spe or the genus Tarangosaurus uh, made an appearance. Um, yeah, but I can't tell which, which species of plesiosaur this is. So we see here uh, two Quetzalcoatlus facing off with the Tyrannosaurus rex. I'm actually a pretty big fan of how the T-Rex is depicted in Prehistoric Planet. It's given a very robust, uh, you know, robust body and it's uh, got a thick skull with large jaw muscles. And they got the, <coughs> they got the uh, crest or they depicted the crest uh, accurately um and it looks like actually there's a dead what appears to be a dead alamosaurus in the background um but um yeah and it's kind of interesting seeing two quetzalcoatlus attempting to face off with a t-rex because you know i don't i would think that a quetzalcoatlus would know better than to attempt to steal a meal from a T-Rex or face off or get into a conflict with the T-Rex because uh, T-Rex or Tyrannosaurus Rex had the strongest bite force of any land animal. So if it got its jaws on the very thin neck of Quetzalcoatlus, that would be the end of it. So it looks like we have a... <clears throat> what appears to be a saltosaurus being uh, startled by a prehistoric frog. Um, I'm going to guess it's a saltosaurus because of the uh, osteo or the scoots or osteoderms or basically, or the bumps on its back based on the paleontological evidence. We know that saltosaurus had uh, had like a, like a, basically a coating of, or basically armor on its, uh, back, sort of similar to this. Now let's check out the official trailer. Looks like we got some ankylosaurs uh, traveling across the landscape here. Can't tell which species because obviously it's too far away. Oh, pretty cool. They're, season two is now going to include the Pachycephalosaurus. And well, first thing, uh, they obviously the dome, the the dome on the skull and the spikes on the back of its skull is obviously accurate. Uh, we have skulls of, of Pachycephalosaurus, and that's what it looks like. Um, but it's, I like, I mean, I think it's interesting how they're going to in now include the Pachycephalosaurus in season two, because this is an animal that lived in the Hell Creek formation during the late Cretaceous, same time as 
things like Tyrannosaurus Rex and Triceratops. Looks like we got a herd of Titanosaurus here, possibly Alamosaurus, because this is taking place during the late Cretaceous. Now, obviously not sure if this is North America in this scene, but yeah, we'll have we'll have to see once uh, season two is officially released uh, which uh, what genus this is. But um, you know, obviously we can conclude that this is these are Titanosaurus because things like uh, Diplodocids and Brachiosaurs did not live during the late Cretaceous. They were more late Jurassic, early Cretaceous uh, families of sauropods. So it looks like the Triceratops is making its return for season two. And, you know, it's pretty cool that they're showing two male Triceratops in conflict, probably battling over mates. Um, and, you know, this is grounded speculation because, uh, you know, op often paleontologists will discuss what the horns and frill were used for and most likely, and, you know, this is what I think, I would think the horns were used for battling other Triceratops uh, in for dominance over the herd and for uh for the right to shoot to for the right to uh the mates and then obviously uh to defend itself from predators such as Tyrannosaurus Rex. We got some baby titanosaurs here. And it's interesting because uh, the paleontologist David Hone, in a video he was in uh, for, I forget the name of the channel, but it was about, it was called Paleontologist Reacts to uh, Dinosaur Scenes in Movies. And at one point he describes how we have fossils of sauropod, juvenile sauropods and sauropod embryos. And basically they would uh, look like this, uh, you know, big eyes, very cute what we would call a cute face and uh, basically a baby version of the adult sauropods. Looks like the Velociraptors are making their return to season two. And this looks like a new species of, or genus of Dromaeosaur. I can't tell which genus, um, but it looks like it's in a different environment than the uh, Velociraptors, obviously. And it's got kind of a different skull shape. But yeah, um, I, can only, I can only say this is a species of, dro or genus of Dromaeosaur. I can't tell. Or yeah, I can't tell which genus specifically. Uh looks like they're including the ankylosaurus in season two uh seen here facing off with some pachycephalosaurs although i could be wrong about this being uh ankylosaurus specifically it's well it's definitely a genus of ankylosaur but um it looks like they're in a desert environment so this might be in this might be in asia um, but it's too early to tell. I can't, I don't really, not really sure which or which genus of ankylosaur this is. As I mentioned when watching the teaser, that's a, probably a saltosaurus based on the armor on its back. And the Nanooksaurus is making its return to season two. Uh, here they're showing it chasing some ornith ornithomimosaurs. Um, 
And yeah, I'm going to guess this is Lake Cretaceous, Alaska. <clears throat> so I'm going to guess this is Edmontosaurus. Uh, it's probably Hell Creek. Um, although it could be, they could be migrating towards more more of a uh, marshy inland environment. And that's one interesting thing uh, that I read in a book called When Dinosaurs Roamed New Jersey. Um, so basically, the author talks about how, um, you know, paleontologists find a lot of hadrosaur fossils in coast and like coastal environments or what what was once uh, a coastal environment because uh, they're found alongside, you know, like marine uh, reptiles and marine other marine animals in like the same strata. So basically the their hypothesis their hypothesis is, and I think this is a interesting hypothesis is, um, is um, the that hadrosaurs such as Edmontosaurus would migrate to like coastal environments such as marshes for food. And then they would move more, they would move to more highland environments for nesting. So it's pot, maybe that's, it could be, or pot, like possibly this, that could be what's happening here. But uh, actually, I'm kind of leaning more towards this being Hell Creek because it does look kind of it, like it could be a swampy environment. And obviously, it's uh, I like how they show uh, the Edmontosaurus uh, caring for its young because, as you all know, ever since the late 70s, like 1978, when you know, Jack Horner discovered the Myasaur, the uh, entire <clears throat> bone bed of Myasaur fossils, uh, with their, you know, uh, fossils of adults with their young. Uh, the it's pretty clear that the paleontological evidence shows that hadrosaurs such as Myasaura and Edmontosaurus cared for their young, and they didn't just abandon their young like uh other reptiles such as lizards and snakes. It's another. So there's a lot of titanosaurs in this season, it looks like. So I know in the previous season, Dreadnought, uh, Dreadnoughtus made its appearance and some titanosaur in Mongolia that lived beside, beside a Tarbosaurus called something like the uh, Mongolian Titan. I don't know if they gave it like an actual name, but looks like they're including more uh, titanosaur genuses in this season and that's another uh, if we go back here that's another thing i like about <clears throat> or that i liked about prehistoric planet uh season one and it looks like they're going to continue this trend in season two um <clears throat> i mean we all love dinosaurs and uh we like seeing dinosaurs on screen but Prehistoric Planet does a good job of not limiting the documentary to just showing uh, what how dinosaurs lived in the late Cretaceous. They also they also show or showcase uh, other prehistoric animals such as ammonites and various pre uh, prehistoric marine reptiles like the mosasaur, and then um, you know prehistoric frogs too. But yeah, in this scene the uh, ammonite makes an appearance, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I was right. Looks like that's a carcass of an Alamosaurus behind the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and they're obvious. And in the T Rex and the uh, Quetzalcoatlus are. Right. Looks like they're in a shoreline environment. So this uh. It's this episode is probably going to depict the Western Interior Seaway, as was shown in episode one of Prehistoric Planet season one. 
uh, the episode where the T-Rex and its young are shown swimming. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's interesting that they're showing, I mean, all, uh, I mean, I guess because there's two Quetzalcoatlus, uh, maybe, I guess maybe it makes for a slightly more fair fight, but even then, <laughs> I think a Quetzalcoatlus would know better than to mess with a full-grown T-Rex, like I said before. All right, so yeah, I'm actually pretty excited for this season of Prehistoric Planet. Uh, like I said before, it looks like more um, ty genuses of Titanosaur are going to be included, and just more environments, uh, different species of uh, or new species of dinosaur that weren't included in season uh, one are going to make their appear make their appearance. Um, such as Pachycephalosaurus. Um, I guess the only thing is, um, I mean, I know season one of Prehistoric Planet limited the time period to the late Cretaceous, like around 66 million years ago, and that looks like that's what season two is doing. Um, but maybe for season three, I'd like to see like a focus on maybe the early or mid Cretaceous, or maybe uh, like an environment like Upper Cretaceous, uh, North Africa, so we could see something like uh, things like Carcharodontosaurus and Spinosaurus uh, shown. But you know, that's my only. Uh, I guess that's my only slight complaint. Other than that, this looks like it's going to be a really good season. I'm pretty excited. <laughs>